Jeff, don't make me take it. I am a friend of the project, and I have been a friend of the project for a very, very long time, and you know what that means. Jeff Stance is an old friend of Mike Lorenzo's. College buddy, high school buddy, drinking buddy, something. Uh, they established that in the first one when uh, Mike's partner has died and they're waiting to go to the funeral, and Jeff shows up at the house to let him know. Mike thinks to get him for the funeral. In fact, the funeral's over, and then... Mike is in that moment. He's, he's standing at the crossroads where he needs to decide, go to the left or go to the right. You know, go to the one. The one side will be full of uh, hardship and danger and uh, a, a violent death, perhaps. And the other side would be, you know, status quo and safety and just doing what you're doing, you know. And uh, Mike is like, well, I'm just going to, you know, let whatever. And that's when Jeff steps in and goes, yeah, but what about this? And gives him the option, and gives him an idea, puts an idea in his head, but warns him that if you go along, you know, path number one, um, it's going to be hard. It's going to be terrible. You're going to hate it. You, you, you. This is not going to be pleasant. But at what cost? Ah, <sighs> the cost. <sighs> that is a decision you must make before you start down this road. But 20 years ago, I, I started up with Ponder's Productions. It wasn't even Ponder's Productions then. It was a uh, Mauser Home Studios, MHS. Started off doing all the uh, projects that Brett was doing back then. Uh, Tale of Two Cities, Macbeth, although I was actually part of that. I was there for when that was going on. And then it just snowballed from there. I should now be the king of Scotland, but only one thing lies in my way. <laughs> the king of Scotland. I'm, I'm not uh, much into the film industry. I'm not a filmmaker. I'm not even really by trade, an actor. Um, but I realized it was a big undertaking, but I didn't think much of it. Brett says, we're going to make 10 films in a year. And I went, okay. If I can help, let me know. And that was about the end of my concern. You know, if someone says, well, it can't be done, it shouldn't be done, I've never much cared for someone who tells me I can't do something. That's, <laughs> that's just never a good idea for, for myself. And Brett and I were kind of raised the same way. Tell us we can't do something, yeah, we're going to tell you 10 reasons why we can, then we're going to show you and then rub it in your face the rest of your life, basically, that we did it and you told us we couldn't. Let's say Donovan was responsible. Okay. Donovan, Donovan was, was responsible. responsible! I just liked coming down and hanging out with Brett. Um, if Brett said, hey, Jeff, I need you to come down here and we're going to stand you by a tree and you're going to talk to Tara. Okay, sure. You know, or you, We're going to go to a bar and you're going to talk to this person. All right. You know, we're going to go to thing and we're going to have fajitas tonight. And while we're having fajitas, could you, could you say some lines? Absolutely. You know, no problem. You know, I need you to do the, I didn't care. You know, I was hanging out with my old friend Brett Mauser, like I said, 20 years. So at the time, you know, less. But still, I mean, you've known someone that long and he says, hey, you want to come down and do it? Sure. What the hell? Why not? You know, it's easy for me to get down to De uh, from Detroit. It's not a big deal. So sure. Absolutely. So for me, it was just hanging out with my buddies. You know, everyone talks about, oh, the long, the long hours and blah, blah, blah. Whatever. I don't give a crap about, about that. You know, I'm hanging out with Brett. You know the Allegheny River's besides the point? God damn it. <laughs> Sometimes when I would come in, I'd basically get the lines coming home from the airport, and Brett's like, okay, here's your lines. I was like, well, cool. How long do I have to learn this? He's like, oh, 35 minutes. Cool, you know. Sometimes that just happened when you're working on a saga like this. It, uh, lots of rewrites, lots of problems with, well, he's had with some of his actors. Uh, they don't, they're not there when they're supposed to be. Oh, that's another frustrating thing. Actors not being where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be there absolutely drives me insane. Um, someone not where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be there. I, and it's not even the fact, you know, your grandma died, you're in a car wreck, you know, your dog was killed by a wild cougar, whatever. Just... You need to stop for Kit Kat and green tea. Call someone. There's a whole communications technique that the U.S. Air Force and NASA has launched into space that allows you to use a very small device about the size of a, 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 a ham sandwich that's called a cell phone that you can use to communicate with people over vast distances. Um, they don't cost a whole lot per month to get. And what do you say, you addle brained little twat? You use it to call somebody and say, hey, 
I can't be there. I was getting bunged in the ass by Jethro, and I'm just running late. Cool. Uh, to call someone. Ooh, just actors not being where they're supposed to be just drives me insane. Ich muss die Juden finden! Heute muss die Juden finden! Domino's Pizza! Ich muss Juden haben! Heute! Mach schnell, du Spider-Hunden! I'm a, I'm a big fan of history. Um, what did, you know, the British Empire think about a bunch of farmers with pitchforks who wanted their own country? What, are they crazy? What, are they stupid? I mean, screw those guys. You can't do that. You know? Um, what did someone say when, you know, uh, some guy gets up on stage and gyrates around like crazy and plays freaky music no one's ever heard? What's his name? Presley something? You know, what did someone say when... Uh, someone came up with the idea, hey, maybe it might be a good idea to punch a, put a bunch of gunpowder stuff in this tube and maybe launch it and see what happens. Who'd thought we'd be, who would think we'd be on the moon with the damn things? I mean, someone who's going to say, oh, it's small budget, it's little, it's not important, short-sighted, they are ignorant, they are every bit as closed-minded and... Uh, um, just stuck in their ways, as many of them would say about everybody else in the world. You know, um, if I hear someone say, "Oh, you can't do that," or "Oh, it's just it's just crap," you know, how many times has someone who has said that been wrong? How many hundreds of times have they been wrong, much to their detriment? How many, you know, millions of people? have gone against the grain and done well. Anyone who's going to say, oh, it's just because it's small, it's unimportant, they're fooling themselves. They are missing an entire world of talent and entertainment and hard work and dedication that isn't got at the end of a union uh, 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 picket line, that isn't had because someone's getting paid a scale that people aren't showing up to say their 10 lines and go home and go to their trailer because they want to get their, you know, union pay. These people are doing it because they love it, because they want to do it, and because it's important to them. And anyone who's going to, you know, degrade the notion that that is important, I haven't even got the time of day for them. The, the sooner they and their like go off into the distance, grow old, and die, and leave the room for the rest of us who are willing to, to, to work, the better the world will be. If that's not being too strong about it. I have been waiting 300,000 years for Mike to get it right. Now I shan't give up on him now just because he got himself killed. I've talked to people about acting, I have no idea what they're talking about. They'll go on about how this, this person, oh, it was a fine performance and so very like this and they're acting and wouldn't you agree? And I'm like, oh, yes, terribly. And I have no idea what the hell I'm, what the hell I'm saying. I'm not an actor, um, but I can appreciate the craft. And so many of the actors that Brett has do so well with their craft. Some don't. Some need improvement. Some need to go away. I'm not, you know. And there's no names in that. I'm just that's that's just a general rule all the way around. When you have a group of people who do something, some are good at it, some are okay at it, and some need to do something else. I am just happy and glad and proud that I was given the opportunity to do something. My, what are you going to do? I want to be just uh, a part of the machine that does its job, that does it well. Knowing the fascination that makes the director happy with my performance and makes the people who watch the show um, feel a certain way. You know, love, loathing, fear, hatred, I don't care. As long as I have an opinion about my character in the movie, I feel like I've done what I'm supposed to do. And that's been the greatest praise for me, is someone to tell me, oh, you know, Jeff's stance, and your character, Jeff, he's so evil or he's so good or... How could he do that? You know, I don't, I would prefer no one ever tell me, oh, you did a good job, Jeff. Oh, you did a good job. I would prefer them to tell me, I hate your character. I love your character. Or how could you do that? You know, that's what I would rather have than the phrase, good job. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. You could be, but if someone, if someone has an emotional response to Jeff's stance, then I've done my job as the actor that Brett wanted me to be. And that's my greatest wish and would be my greatest compliment.